Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the BNC Connect with Control-M LDAP Integration Conference Call. One note that today's call is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Basil Faruqi. Please go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you, and welcome, everyone, in today's session of Connect with Control-M. Our topic today is uh, Control-M's integration with LDAP. So the agenda for today's session is we'll start off with a conceptual overview of the integration, and uh, we'll have a demo of the control ends integration with Microsoft Active Directory. And then finally, my favorite part, Q&A session with uh, the audience today. Um, you can submit your questions through the Q&A window, and we will take those at the end of the session today. So what? Um, LDAP integrations is control and support. Control and supports any LDAP implementation that's based on the open LDAP platform. Uh, some popular vendors in this space are Microsoft with Active Directory and Oracle with uh, Sun One or iPlanet Directory Server. Uh, Microsoft uh, seems to have the largest market share in this space with their Active Directory implementation. The Control-M has grown over the years, and the LDAP integration is not new to Control-M. For example, um, in 6.2, we had an API that was available. You could write your own integration. In version 6.3 and 6.4, we uh, made a major leap forward and provided a built-in interface to integrate with um, LDAP, and Active Directory, of course, was one of them. But you still needed to create users inside of Control-M. You no longer needed to maintain passwords inside Control-M, but you would create a user and map it to um, their account in LDAP. Um, then again, a major leap forward in version 7 and version 8, uh, where we started providing group-level mapping, where you would no longer need to create users or passwords in Control-M. You would simply map a group inside Control-M to a group in um, LDAP, and uh, your users will be able to authenticate and access using their uh, NT or Windows user ID and password that they use to log into their PC and perhaps other applications. So to get a high level understanding of how the group mapping works, we'll consider uh, an example here. So in Control M Enterprise Manager, you have the groups such as admin group, update group, browse group. And in LDAP, let's say you've got a couple of groups here, production control group and batch services group. Within the production control group, if you wanted to give Anna, Mary, and Jason administrative privileges inside Control M without defining Anna, Mary, and Jason inside Control M, you could simply go ahead and map the admin group to the production control group, and then Anna, Mary, and Jason would have administrative privileges inside Control M. Similarly, if uh, Kim and Susan needed browse level access inside Control M, we could map the browse group to the batch services group, and then Kim and Susan would have browse level privileges inside Control M. Now we'll take a look at how the authentication process works. So let's say we've got a user who accesses the Control M Enterprise Manager GUI and uh, logs in with their LDAP credentials. So when they enter their username and password, that's passed over to the Enterprise Manager server. And the Enterprise Manager server in this um, setting is more of a messenger. So he takes those credentials and connects to the LDAP server and uh, passes those credentials over to the LDAP server for verification. Here, Control M EM is asking a two-part question uh, from the LDAP server. And the first part, he says, I've got a user. Uh, that's trying to connect with LDAP credentials. Here's their username and password. Is this, is this user valid and is the password correct? And if the answer to that is yes, the next phase of the question is, well, can you provide me with a list of groups that this user is a member of so I can check it against my list? And then the LDAP server responds back with this information. And based on, on this information, Control M will decide whether uh, this user has been granted access or has been denied access. If the access is granted, what level of access is it? Is it administrator level, browse level, or whatever else may have been defined? Now, um, we'll transition over to the demo. In the demo, we'll consider a scenario. Um, let's say we've got some jobs from the SAP application that are now being scheduled via Control-M. 
As the control and administrator, the task for you is to allow two users, Mary Andrews and Jim Smith, browse capability for jobs within the SAP application inside control M. Mary and Jim are not defined as users in control M DM. However, they are member of the SAP Ops Group and Active Directory. So now um, I'll go ahead and um, share my lab environment here, where we will accomplish the task we just looked at during the um, the demo scenario. So the first part of this is to set up the LDAP configuration. And to set up the configuration, we will log into the configuration manager. Right now, I'll just go ahead and log in as the local account, which is the EM user, which a lot of you might be familiar with. That's typically the default account that gets created um, when you install Control M. So once you're inside the CCM, you will go to the system configuration under tools and then EM system parameters. And the first screen you see here is a um, form that will allow you to set up the LDAP authentication. So we have one set up here, but we'll delete this and start from scratch. If I wanted to add, the first thing you do is you type in the name of a domain you're trying to add. This is a logical name. This could be anything, but you want to name it something that's logical and makes sense for your organization. So my domain that I'm going to be using in this um, demo is called CTM Lab, so I'll name the domain here CTM Lab as well. And then I'll go ahead and click the Add button, which brings up the rest of the form. So the first uh, field here is the LDAP directory search user and its password. So this is the user that Control M will use to connect to the LDAP server. Now this user can be any user that has at least browse level privileges inside Control M. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and use my own account. This could be, by the way, any account that has browse level privileges inside LDAP. The transmission protocol, you know, you have option of doing TCP, which is default, or SSL. In today's demo, we'll just be using TCP. Uh, if you need more information to do this over SSL, you can consult the Control M SSL guide for version 7. Uh, the directory server type, in today's demo, we'll be using Active Directory, so I'll pick that. So this completes the portion of saying, well, who am I connecting as and what protocol uh, will I be using? The next portion of it is, OK, where is this server and what port is it listening on? So in my, and this is the portion, um, both the LDAP user as well as the server host name and port um, and the search space, which we'll cover in just a minute. All this information here is something that you will need to ask your LDAP administrator for. In our case, the server host name is Vibu. The default port active directory is 3. Eight, nine, and you go ahead and press enter. Now, search space is uh, more of an LDAP terminology, so uh, if you're not familiar with it, that's OK. And what we'll do is to better explain the concept of the search space, we'll try to look at things from uh, the Active Directory perspective. So now I'll, I'll go ahead and move over to uh, the Active Directory server, which is Zigu, and I have that open here in a remote desktop. So if you haven't seen this before, this is what uh, the interface looks like to the Microsoft Active Directory LDAP implementation. This is basically just showing a list of uh, all the objects in Active Directory. So if you notice that um, that's the um, domain name I had used, it's CTM Lab, and that's what I had named the domain inside the form in um, the CCM. So if you notice, this is a tree-like structure. Um, has the root is CTM Lab, and there are objects inside of it. The search space concept is basically when Control M submits uh, a search request to the LDAP server, uh, it wants to give it a starting point. Okay, so should it start right at the root? If, if that's the case.
case, then you would specify the route saying, okay, well, start searching from CTN lab down. But this is a lab environment where we have, uh, you know, not too many objects here. In a real production environment, you could have hundreds of thousands of objects inside the, inside this tree. So when Control-M submits the query, um, and if it has to traverse, the LDAP server has to traverse the entire tree, that query may take a very long time. So in our scenario, we have Jim Smith and Mary Andrews inside this group, or as Microsoft calls it, organizational unit called EMEA, which is under the tree WLA operators. So it, it makes sense that if both the user, by the way, the SAP Ops group is also under the WLA operators branch. So if the group as well as the users are um, within this branch of the tree, it probably makes sense to start this, the, this the starting point for our search. Um, this is similar to saying that if, a build, if an office building has 10 floors and uh, you're looking for a person named John, but if you knew that, that John is located somewhere between the 8th and the 10th floor, that makes your search a lot, lot easier versus having to look on all 10 floors. So if we want to give this as the starting point, uh, let me transition back over to the CCM. So if you notice here that the format that it's looking for is DC equals something, DC equals. So this is basically um, called the distinguished name format. Now, you can ask your LDAP administrator to provide this information in distinguished name format, and more than likely they will be able to provide you that information. But for the purposes of the demo, we will walk through how to get that information as well. If I want to make WLA operators my starting point, I can run uh, an LDAP command that will produce that information for me. Go ahead and copy this. Again, this is not a control M command. This is something that's only available on the Active Directory server. And the DS query will produce um, the output in distinguished name format. So I'll go ahead and paste that here, press Enter. And now this form is complete. So we've uh, just a quick recap of the form. We've given our domain uh, a logical name. We've uh, defined who will we connect as, what type of directory server we're using, uh, what's the host name with the directory server, what port does it listen on, and what's the search base or the starting point for the queries with an LDAP. After that, you can just click Activate Changes. So this comes back with the, with the dialog box, which is telling you that the GUI server connected successfully, GAS, BIM, and CMS. This is basically saying that all the components inside EM are now LDAP ready. So once you've configured this portion, now you're ready to do the group mapping, as we had uh, seen in the presentation. To do that, you will go ahead and log in to the Enterprise Manager. I'll log in as EM user. You'll go to Tools and Authorizations. This is the authorizations facility that you all are familiar with. Now, if you notice, I don't have any users defined here except for EM user. Now, if you go to the Groups tab, I have some groups defined here. And I've got a pre-built group called SAP Browse Group, so we'll take a look at this group here. Now, this is the group that has browse access for SAP jobs, and this group is limited to um, an application prefix that starts with SAP, and they can only take browse actions on it on all the jobs that are within the SAP application. Starting with version 7 and version 8, there's a new tab here called LDAP Groups. This is the tab where you will map the group. So in our case, we're going to map the SAP Browse Group, and let me quickly switch over to the LDAP environment, to the SAP Ops Group in Active Directory. So if we look at the properties of this group, you'll notice and the members is showing Jim Smith and Mary Andrews are members of the SAP Ops Group. 
So we'll simply go ahead and type SAP underscore ops, go ahead and press enter, and uh, the mapping is now complete. See if we can bring up another EM GUI session and log in as Mary Andrews. So as you can see, the login is now successful. If we pull up the jobs here, so only the SAP jobs are now visible in browse level access mode for Mary Andrews. If I go back to EM user, you notice that there's a lot more jobs that are visible because EM user is an administrator in this um, environment. EM is part of the admin group. Notice, again, Mary Andrews is not defined here. The way we were able to authenticate Mary Andrews was by mapping the SAP Browse group from the LDAPs tab to the SAP Ops group in Active Directory. Switching back to the login for Mary Andrews here. And once they log in as an Active Directory user, you, you're able to see them here. So it says mandrews at ctmlab.bnc.com connected to CTMQ product. So switching back to the Active Directory environment, if your environment is not too big, if you're not too sure what your search base is, you may, you may want to just start off with the root. If your searches take too long or things start timing out, that's probably when you may want to talk to your LDAP administrator. Most of the LDAP administrators are familiar with the concept, and they may be able to work with you and figure out, oh, OK, well, what users do you have? What groups are they a part of? And they can um, look at your Active Directory environment or whatever LDAP implementation you have and tell you what's the starting point. Uh, one more thing I want to point out. So in our case, we started at WLA operators. But let's say that we also wanted Ben Jones and Sarah Rogers to have some access but they're further up in the tree. So should we define the route to be ctmlab.bmc.com? Certainly that's an option. We, what we could have also done is taken, added a second layer of the search base. So we could have had, let me switch back to the configuration manager. Right now I have one here. I could have added multiple entries here as the search base. So at that point, on control M, connects to the LDAP server for um, authentication of the user, it will submit multiple search starting points. It will say, well, search starting from WLA operators down, and also search from BMC um, down in the tree. So if that was the case in the tree here, so the branch starts at BMC and ends at HR. So it would have searched BMC and HR, and then it would have come down here and then traversed the rest of the tree. So just a quick checklist of uh, the things you need to do this implementation. Um, the things you will need from your LDAP administrator are the LDAP server, hostname, and port, uh, the search user that uh, will be used to connect to the LDAP environment, uh, as well as the search base that we talked about. Now, you're listening to this webinar today, and it may be several months from now that you decide to uh, do the LDAP implementation. Um, a recording of this webinar will be available through bmc.com, but in addition to that, there's a white paper available on our knowledge base that covers this integration and shows uh, screenshots and um, from both the Control M side as well as the Active Directory side. So if you want to pass that on to your LDAP administrator for a better understanding of how this integration works, that's certainly an option. Okay. With that, we will now move to Q&A.